Greenway One Iron Chance are delighted to be joined by Raphael Jacqueline, the winner of the 2022 One Greenway Invitation. And Raphael, thank you for joining us. Great to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you too. So take me back to last year then and the victory. How special was it for you? Well, it's always good to, to win a tournament and especially this one. It was nice to see all the, I mean, all the players have been playing on tour since oh, 25, 26 years now. So that was, that was great and it was nice to play with the ladies as well. So I think the format is amazing and when you win, it's even better. So I had a good partner as well. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to go, to go back this year. Did the quality of the field really impress you? Because it's a pretty stellar lineup, isn't it? It is. It was impressive to see all the names. I mean, when you look at the, yeah, all the names, we had last year, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like a, a major on paper, so <laughs> it was fun to, again, to, to play with her and to see all the all the players I've met on tour since I, I started in 97. <laughs> yeah, so what was, the, what was the key to your success that week then? Uh, my age, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, when I used to, uh, I was playing on the on the main tour, I mean the DP World Tour since uh, I said 25 years, and I was still playing last year full time. So it's uh, it's a different it's different to play with the senior anyway. It's a bit easier by the length of the course, by the length length of the players as well. And uh, and as I said, I was I was practicing art like uh, like every year and. Uh, I'm going to try to be exactly the same this year, even if I didn't play that much because it's early in the season for us. But uh, I will I will practice next week and try to defeat my title, to defend my title. Absolutely. So you played with Guy Forger, the, the tennis player. Do you know Guy anyway? Yeah, actually we had a meeting the, for lunch today. So so we plan to, to do a bit better this year and try to win this tournament because we finished third last year. I know he's practicing even harder than me. I think he plays more golf than me at the moment. <laughs> so I'm not sure about me, but he will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> and your son Hugo was on the back, wasn't he? How special was that? It's always a, uh, it's always special to have a, uh, to have your son on the back. I mean, I've got four boys, so I've got plenty of caddies for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but to have Hugo on my, on the back. And to have a win, it was it was yeah, it's a special moment. And uh, especially he's a teaching pro. He wants to play a little bit. He played few tournaments on a pro golf tour. Uh, of course, he wants to play. He's 25, so that was good to have him on the back. And he can see, I mean, all the names. And uh, I bring him as well during the, the year on the main tour, and uh, so he knows exactly what he has to do if he wants to play at a high level. And at the moment, it's a really high level. So, so that was fun. Does he feel a bit of pressure having you as his dad, trying to make it in the golf world? I think it is a pressure, of course, but uh, I always told them, I mean, if you if you want to play, just keep the pleasure you want to have on the course, because it's a game, first of all. So take a lot of pleasure, a lot of fun, and, uh, and try your best for the rest, you'll see. But of course, it would. I think it is a, it is a pressure for them, but uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> And have you got your family coming over this time around? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'll be on my own with uh, with Guy, of course. <laughs> like me, he's a club coach, so I think he is me for the week. He's going to be my caddy coach player. Very good, very good. So, what about Quinto and what about Portugal? Obviously, you played and had great success a year ago, but I, I, pres I know you've played a lot in Portugal through your career anyway. How, how, what do you love about it? Well, it was it was good to go down the down the south uh, in Alga for the for the sunshine first of all, and the quality of the courses, as you said, I've been playing in Portugal since my beginning on tour, and it's always I mean I've never been surprised by the weather I have to say, and uh, we found as a French very very good restaurants around, so the food is great as well. <laughs> yeah, but far from where we live, so it's a, it's a really an easy going. An easy destination to play golf and uh, and a lot of sunshine, so we can't complain. That's all we we do for the. That's all I've done for the last 25 years. So, yeah, it's a great destination for golf. And would you go and practice say, outside? Would you ever go on holiday with friends, or would you go down with family to Portugal at all, or is it mainly just when you've been competing? Always when I've been competing, I have to say I would love to go on holidays, but 
again, I've been, yeah, I've been away for 25, 26 years. And uh, I mean, it's tough to get some, uh, some time off to, to go on the same destination and to, to just not play golf. So that's, uh, that's one of the, yeah, the destination we're going to go with the family, but they all play golf. So it's going to be tough not to play golf even with them. <laughs> exactly. 2022 last year, aside from the victory at the One Greenway Invitational, how was the year for you as a whole? Uh, I have to say, I was feeling well and I was hitting the ball well, but uh, unfortunately the result on the DP World was were not so good. I mean, but uh, I have to, at, at one stage you have to say to yourself, I mean, it's maybe time to not to rest because I don't want to rest. It's a transition year for me this year in 23 because I, I'm going to try to play in, uh, to qualify for the Champions Tour in America. So I have to keep on playing. On the DP World, when I'm gonna, I'll try to. I'm gonna play the French Open, of course, the Spanish Open. So last year was was hard on the result, but uh, I feel great. I mean, I'm, I'm fit and no injuries. So just the level on the DP World Tour is just maybe too good for us. I mean, for me at the moment, and uh, I'm 40, yeah, 48, going on 49 this year. So it's, uh, I mean, after 26 years, it's time to go on there on the other side maybe but uh, I was happy with my game and, and with my last year I have to say on full dash on tour but I'll be back on tour each year a few times and you're looking ahead so obviously like you said you turned 50 you're looking at the champions tour as a goal how motivated are you to almost for this next stage of your career uh, I have to prepare myself for November not to for the qualifying school in America first of all it's tough to get the card because they're the only spots, but there's, there's a, they're going to be in 24 for me would be in Europe as well. So I've got plenty of uh, opportunities as well, but I'm going to try first of all in America. I know all the names. I've been playing with all these guys, the top guys. Uh, I spoke with Carlson, I spoke with Arrington about it, and they said, I mean, just keep, try to keep the level up and try to qualify because it's fun. So that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal I mean for it. Yeah, and I've spoken to a few of the guys and you know, know a lot of the guys well, and the standard is phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, a lot of these guys, they sort of maybe get to late 40s, they're eyeing up the seniors, the, you know, the Legends Tour, the Champions Tour. What have you heard about the standard of competition? Because these guys are still really hungry, aren't they? They're playing really good. I mean, you can see the scores and everything, but I'll try. I'll try my best and, uh, and see how it goes, but it would be... It would be fun for me, it would be fun for the family as well, because if I get the car, they will, they will come, they will join me in America. So, why not? A new life. <laughs> Absolutely. How much do you, you know, the traveling, you talk about your career, 25, 26 years on tour. How, how much do you still love the traveling and enjoy the life of a professional golfer? I love, still love to, to go on that first tee. Definitely. That's for sure. But traveling, I'm not so sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the airports and the travel and the, and the hotel is the, of course, after 25 years, it's getting tiring. But uh, that's maybe if I can go to America, uh, it's going to be a different, different way, different life, bringing the family a bit more. So we'll see. But yeah, definitely traveling is the, I mean, it's not the best at the moment. So. Yeah. I'm really happy this year. I'm not going to play 25, 20, between 25 and 30 weeks. So it will, will be more like 10, 10, 12 weeks. So at least I'm going to spend more time with the family. And that's, uh, that's great. That's just great. Absolutely. Just tell me a bit about you as a, Raphael, as a, as a person. Tell me about, we just said that you went skiing over the Christmas holidays. What do you love to do in your downtime? What, you know, what, what excites so, you? What are some of your hobbies? During the winter, I definitely love like love to ski i never stop skiing even if it's a bit dangerous but uh, uh i never stopped i couldn't stop because it's too much fun i'm gonna do a lot of nordic ski as well so Very it's nice. a, mm, where we live in geneva it's only 30 30 minutes away so i'm gonna take the time to do that during winter and as soon as the sunshine and it's getting warmer i will i will go on my bike i love the road bike so that's uh that's all these things that I didn't get the time to do during my career. I mean, not as much as I can. So I've got few, yeah, I've got few goals to to do. So that's that's gonna be me for a bit of 23. 
But then if I can, if I play in 24 full time. <laughs> less, less skiing and less cycling. <laughs> but spend more time with the family. And I think that's the, that's missing as well. Yeah. If you got the full, the Champions Tour card, would you base yourself full time in America or would you travel back and forth? I think we'll base full time in America. The, I mean, all the kids want to, want to move, so. Yeah. Why not? Why yeah. not? I love it. <laughs> and let's talk a little bit about, let's go back in your career a little bit. So the four European Tour victories, obviously now the DP World Tour. I was just saying to you before we started our interview, I was there covering your Spanish Open victory in 2013 for Sky Sports. It went to a nine hole playoff and all our TV crew were rushing after your victory to try and catch flights home. But it was an unbelievable, it was unbelievable drama at the end. Take me back with your recollection of of the nerves you were feeling during that playoff? Uh, first of all, we'd be, yeah, we started by three players with, um, I forgot his name, but I think he stopped after two two holes. And then I finished with uh, Max Kiefer. Yeah. And I remember, I mean, telling Max at the end, I mean, you, you young, you got plenty of time. And, and he went back to me last year, just after his win, he said, I, I waited for a long time to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, when you win after nine holes, club, it's so obviously it's a lot better feeling. Uh, but my nerves were pretty cool during that nine holes playoff, and uh, unfortunately we played the same hole for nine holes. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of an easy hole, par four with a, like a driver and a wedge. So we had a lot of pars and not enough birdies to win it before, but. Uh, I mean, once I remember one hole in this nine holes playoff, especially when Max hold like a long 15 meters putt from outside of the green, and I was like a meter putt for birdie. So that was kind of a, oh, it's almost done. But no, it was not done. I have to make it this one. And uh, so that was the, that was the big nerve at that time. But for the rest, and we just, uh, I just did my best. And uh, at the moment, my best was better than, than Max. So that was a good experience. Tiring, but a good experience. When you look back at your your career and the victories, I mean, it, you, you know, you look at the standard of golf is phenomenal, isn't it? It's so hard. You know, I covered the tournament of champions on the PJ Tour uh, last week, and Morikawa was seven clear, and he ends up losing to by a couple to John Rahm. It is so hard to win. When you look back at your victories on the European Tour, how proud are you of of what you've achieved in your career? Uh, of course, I would have would love to win more, but it's. Uh... I mean, I, I did my best, and uh, to win, to win on tour, it's something special. Anyway, you're playing with the best players in the world. Maybe not every week, but I mean, they're here. Especially at, back at that time, there was a lot more names playing in Europe. So, I mean, the level, of course, is better now. I mean, higher, as you said. But uh, winning on tour, I have to say, in any tours, but DP World Tour, PGA Tour, maybe. Of course, the majors, it's even more difficult, but it's uh, it means a lot. So it's not, it's not about winning one, two, three, four times. Of course, it's difficult to win more than that. The, the best players in the, world, in the world won a lot of tournaments, but uh, be, being part of the winners category, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it. So I can't, I can't regret anything. I did my best during my career. and. Uh, and I hope it's not over, as, uh, as we said, on the Champions Tour. If you could look back and you say a standout victory or a standout year or something that you're, you're most proud of, maybe you've been struggling and you found something and you went on to, to get a great run or pick up a victory. What You look back, what's the thing that maybe stands out the most from your career? Uh, actually, when I respond to that question, because that question uh, what I remember is not a win, actually. What I remember is when I played my first uh, pre-qualification for the DP World, I mean for the Euro European Tour. It was back in 95 in France, Saint-Cyprien. And I made eight birdies in a row to qualify to the final. And I think that was, that was the key of my career, I have to say. I mean, for some reason, I did birdies from the 7th to the 14th, and then I made the final. And then I played on Challenge Tour for one year and then qualified for the rest of my life and my career on, on the main tour. So I remember every time that day, the last round, so was the third round, and 
for some reason, I don't know, I made eight birdies in a row. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the key. I mean, I always say that's the key of my career. By luck, by, I don't know, I don't know where does that come from, but it happens. Amazing. And yeah, you've had all this success. How, how tough is it maybe to keep that motivation and the hunger year in, year out? Because it is relentless, isn't it? It's, it's a lot of traveling, a lot of competition. You must be proud also of your longevity and the success you've had over such a long period of time. Yeah, but I mean, I always worked with a, with a team. Even if it's an individual sport, I always worked as a team. Like, uh, because I'm from the... I'm, I played a lot of soccer when I was young and I love to play with a team. Yeah. You know, I'm the only one to play on the course. you got the caddy close to you, but you're the only one to play. But uh, I always think with my team, so that was was really the key of my career as well and uh, when we get uh, when I met my wife in 2000 we straight away traveled together I mean I didn't want to travel on my own uh, by luck she, she, she said yes and <laughs> she traveled <laughs> and we traveled those two boys as well so for the first for 10 years from 2000 to 2010 we've been traveling together as a family and that's uh, that's another key. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that career without my team and, and my family with me. So that's uh, that was another key for me to bring all that stuff together. That's lovely. Yeah, really nice. And when you look at the when you look at the tours now, Raphael, it's obviously we won't get into the the nitty gritty, the ins and outs, because professional golf has changed a huge amount, and live golf is. It's been extremely divisive and contentious over the last sort of 12 months or so. But when you look at, at the quality at the top of the game, when you look at, you know, McElroy as well, number one, and you see the performances of John John Rahm, how how good a state is professional golf in when you look at that top echelon? How how lucky are we? How blessed are we with golf right now? I mean, especially for me, I mean, I arrived with a, with a Tiger Woods area. I mean, when he won in 97 and then he bring the the world of golf, I mean, really high, and uh, I've been lucky to get to be in the same same time. That I can say. And I saw the the changes, the level of the guys year by year, and we get to the point now, or as you said, like uh, done round one last week with making a 62 to finish and to win by I mean by one or two, I don't know, on Malgara, and he was like seven shots ahead. So that that means the level is really really high. I saw the, all the changing, changes on the material, on the guys, but when you see Tiger Woods bringing the, the physical side of the game, I remember when I was on, arrived on tour, I was almost on my own on the, on the, in the gym. Now, I mean, it's difficult to find a spot in the gym. So, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just getting more professional, for sure. And uh, when I arrived on tour, uh, we were going out a bit more. Now there's not even one guy is going out during the week, no chance. So that's that's make that the the golf more professional, and that's why the level is so high. And the guys got, I mean, they're trying to do the best on every part of the game. So that's uh, they're just different. They're just different and getting more professional and better. They're all better. So that's that's great to see and great to watch, especially when you've been playing on tour at a high level, and when you see the score. The, they have all to make and the distance and the, the accuracy, accuracy and the number of putts. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah. You mentioned the Tiger era. Did, did we, did we play with Tiger in your career? Yeah, I played once. I mean, in the same group in the, in the World Cup in Japan, 2001, with him and David Duval. And that, that was, I mean, that time they were just <laughs> unbeatable. Yeah. That was a nice little three ball, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> One World Cup. Yeah, against uh, South Africa, I think there was uh, Goosen and, and Ernie Els. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was just, uh, yeah, that was crazy, especially in Japan. That was packed from the tee to the green. So that was something special. But uh, again, every time I was in a tournament with Tiger, it was something special in Dubai, everywhere in the world. So that's, uh, yeah, as I said, it's, uh, I've been lucky to play in the same kind of timing. Absolutely. Look, Raphael, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, congratulations on your 2022 victory, and we look forward to watching you try and defend that title in a few weeks' time. Cool. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Raphael Jacqueline, for joining us now. One Greenway, one Iron Chat. We'll see you in the Algarve. Thank you.